Hi, so my name is Chris, and today I'm going to be talking about high blood pressure disorders in pregnancy. I'm going to refrain from talking about the acute management of sustained severe range blood pressures, but I can go on that in a different video. But this video is about the rest of the hypertension. High blood pressure in pregnancy. Uh, the first number that you see on your blood pressure reading is the systolic number, um, and the bottom one is the diastolic. So if you have a reading of greater than 140 over 90, either number, diagnosed twice, at least four hours apart, then congratulations, you now have hypertension. Now, if this comes before 20 weeks of gestation, then you are called a chronic hypertensive. And if this comes after 20 weeks, you're called gestational hypertensive. That's kind of where it is. If you have chronic hypertension, the risk of you end up developing protein in your urine, which I'm gonna go into, is like around 11%, but that's like the next stage of diagnoses. Hypertension, the next step is if your hypertension hits your kidneys. And if it hits your kidneys, you might start spilling out protein in your urine. And we can measure this multiple different ways. The fastest way in the office is just a dipstick. They're just gonna dip a, dip a little thing in your urine, and if it comes out plus two plus, then that can be a way to diagnose. Not the best way. And the two other better ways of diagnosing are either a random urine protein creatinine, UPC, and this, if it's at greater than 0.3, then you can rule in for preeclampsia. And then the other way is if they take 24 hours of your urine, they collect all of it. And if you have greater than 300 milligrams, then you can also rule in for preeclampsia. So gestational hypertension plus protein in your urine, which is like end organ failure of your kidneys is preeclampsia. So that's how you get the diagnosis of preeclampsia. And then you can also have preeclampsia with severe features. Now these severe features um, can be either lab values or they can be physical exam findings. Now the lab values, pretty easy. You can either have low platelets. This is gonna be under 100,000. Usually you're gonna live around like 250, something like this. So under 100,000 is gonna be diagnostic criteria. Have elevated liver enzymes. This is two times the upper limit of normal at whatever institution you are getting care provided to. You can also have serum creatinine levels greater than 1.1 or twice whatever your baseline is. And then you can also just have physical exam findings. So one of them is fluid filling your lungs. So they should be listening to your lungs. This is called pulmonary edema. The um, other options as well for physical exams is gonna be headaches that don't respond to medications and don't have another alternative diagnosis like migraines. Or you can have visual changes and these are gonna be like bright lights, um, dark spots or bright fuzzies kind of in the outsides of your vision. It's called scotomas or you can have right upper quadrant pain. So those are like the physical exam findings that you would suggest um, pre-E with severe features. Now, after pre-E with severe features, a rare population, I think around 4%, might be able to, might end up developing HELP syndrome. HELP syndrome is an acronym, which stands for, H is for hemolysis. The EL is elevated liver enzymes, and the LP is for low platelets. Hemolysis is just the breakdown of red blood cells, and I'm gonna go into like how we define it because it's not really clear, um, but the elevated liver enzymes, kind of easy, 2X upper limit of normal, and the low platelets, also pretty easy, under 100,000. So how do we define hemolysis? So like breakdown of red blood cells. Looking at other disorders in pregnancy, we can use either peripheral blood smear. So they take your blood, they put it on a slide, they look under a microscope, and if they see schistocytes, which I can show a picture of them right here, then that's pretty diagnostic for um, red blood cell breakdown. And you can also have LDH levels elevated in your blood. LDH is lactate dehydrogenase. It is an enzyme also a protein that is responsible for the oxidation reduction process in order to maintain energy levels within red blood cells. If the red blood cells break, then whole big, the whole packet of red blood cell material goes out into like your blood stream. That means like LDH is gonna be like go crazy high up. And then the last thing is also haptoglobin. So your liver releases like a bunch of policemen called haptoglobin in your like bloodstream. And if they find hemoglobin free in your red blood cells, they like bind to it and like get rid of themselves. But if there's low haptoglobin, that's kind of indicative that probably a lot of red blood cells are breaking down, opening up their bags of contents, LDH gets let out, hemoglobin gets let out, and the hemoglobin then binds to haptoglobin and that's how you have like the lower portion of it. So that's like the diagnostic criteria for HELP syndrome. The management of this is a little bit different. Um, you are gonna be giving them medications to control their high blood pressure. This is to reduce stroke. Um, and those medications will be safer mom and for baby. You would also be giving them 24 hours of mag, um, at least when after they deliver 24 hours of mag. 
And then you also might be giving them steroids. And this might be um, in accordance to the Mississippi Protocol, which is written by Martin et al. And I'm going to go into that into like to a different video. I don't want to go into that right now, but in general, I just wanted to explain kind of what HELP syndrome is, how we get there from high blood pressure, and kind of everything in between. So I hope that helps. I'm going to be making more videos either about the papers um, or about like the specific management of HELP syndrome later, but this was just a progression video.